Thanksgiving is less than a week away and Christmas is right around the corner. Have you started making your Christmas ornaments yet? If not, you're late. So you better get busy and I'm going to show you how to do it. Well, if you're going to make Christmas ornaments, you're going to need some Christmassy looking rocks. So I've gone with some Unikite, I've got red jasper and some white quartz. Then you're going to need stencils. So I just drew these up on the computer and then I cut mine out. This is cardstock. I cut these out with my new laser engraver just because that's fun. Uh, but I used to cut them out with an X-Acto knife. That works well too. So make yourself some stencils. Then I'm going to trace them on my cabs with just a, a fine tip Sharpie. If you're going to try this yourself, there's something you should know about my saw. Uh, this is a gem lap saw. It was made in Michigan, I'm not sure exactly when. I guess somewhere between the 50s and the 70s. It's not made anymore, so you, you can't buy one like that. Uh, this is a Fran Tom. It was made in California probably around the same time. Uh, this has a label actually in the front of it. The other one doesn't. Uh, so this is what most saws that you buy today are going to be like if you buy a trim saw. And there's a problem with cutting out shapes with it. Here's the problem. If you cut an inside corner on something like that, it looks really nice on the top, but on the bottom, can you see that corner there? It's undercut. It cuts a little bit deeper there. Uh, that's because the saw blade here sticks out more here than it does here. This doesn't meet at a 90 degree angle. It's an obtuse angle, a little bigger than 90 degrees. On this one, uh, the saw blade comes out of the table at 90 degrees right here. So for this first little bit here, as long as you're not cutting something too thick, that's going to cut the same depth on the bottom and on the top. Uh, the reason is, is because the arbor of this one is at the same height of the table. Uh, you can kind of see it there. This is the arbor, the shaft that goes through the blade. And on this one, the blade doesn't stick up halfway like the other one. Uh, the arbor is well underneath the table. Uh, the nice thing here is you've got a deeper depth of cut. On this one, you have this thing blocking it. So because this arbor's in the way, you can't cut very deeply that way. So they both have their pros and cons, but for the kind of stuff I like doing, I really like this saw a lot. If you have a trim saw like this, it's not a hopeless situation. You just make yourself a little ramp. I had this saw before the other one, and I don't know if I made mine perfectly, uh, but it was good enough to get the job done. You want to get this so it's aiming towards the middle of the of the blade. And so it's at least closer to a 90 degree angle there where it's coming out. Uh, people have asked me how I made this, and it depends on your saw. You have to make it for your own saw. So uh, you, like I said, as long as you're close, it's going to be good enough. Well, this cutting takes a little while, so I sped the film up to double speed. And you can see as I go along here, I get just slightly off track, which I probably could have just left. The rock also broke right there, but that doesn't matter. Uh, so I went back and just touched it up a little bit. And then along this side, I'm just going to get close to it and just make some rough cuts, just to take some of the bulk of the rock off at first. And then I'll go back and just touch it up and get closer and closer. And what you'll see me doing here sometimes is using the kind of the side of the blade as a grinder rather than the front edge of the blade. So much like right there, I'm kind of grinding on the side of the blade. And there's the little flat part where I glue the ball on later. And this inside curve is by far the hardest part of this whole thing. Uh, the other side is pretty easy. Uh, this is a little bit tricky because the blade wants to dig in as you're going around that, that inside curve. Uh, on the other side, the edge of the blade's kind of going away from the rock so it doesn't dig in so much. So you just do the best you can getting in here. It's not going to be perfect. Any imperfections can be taken out uh, with the lotto tumbler. It won't take everything out, but it takes some out. So I'm dragging backwards along here, but even there it kind of wants to bounce along those bumps. Just do the best you can. This is not perfect. All right, next thing I'm going to do is to drill holes with my Dremel in the drill press attachment. 
I need holes to put an eye in so there's somewhere to hang them from. I like to put a little crosshair on everything so I can see once it's underwater it's a little easier to line everything up and not wonder if I have it centered that way. I have all my parts cut out, holes drilled, so these are going to go in the Lotto tumbler now. This is a vibratory tumbler, and that's pretty important because this won't change the shape of them very much, where a rotary tumbler will. These are going to go in from my normal run, which is two days of 220 silicon carbide, three days of 500 aluminum oxide, and then two days of aluminum oxide polish. Uh, the only difference is there's extra ceramics in here from what I usually do. Whenever I do a lot of flat shapes, I put in extra ceramics. It just seems to get those flat sides uh, polished up a little bit better. So we'll check back on these in a week. All right, these are out of the tumbler. You can see they've got a pretty good shine on them. Uh, but I don't really want to shine where the glue is going to be. I want to rough that up a little bit so the glue will grab a little bit better. Uh, one thing to be careful of is make sure you don't rough up the side with the hole. So you can see the hole right there. Uh, that's going to be on the top, so it's the opposite side that I want to rough up. I'm going to use my Dremel with a little uh, diamond burr here. So let's just flip that on. And this takes some shine off. A bit there. A bit here. So it takes just a little bit. Uh, sometimes I get this wet ahead of time. Uh, it's a little better on the, the diamond burr uh, and it keeps the dust down. I don't do it underwater because it would just splash all over the place, but I dip them both in water and then I do that. Uh, but for the video here, I decided not to. Okay, it's time to glue this up so I have my little mitten ready to go. Uh, this is my epoxy mixing board that I use all the time. You can see it's been well used. I use uh, epoxy 330, which I'm not very good at keeping the bottles clean. And then I have some acetone or nail polish remover on hand in case I uh, smudge some around. So I've got, that's the Q-tips are for, to, to wash that. So sometimes I get a little smudge in there and I just wipe it off with that. And I do have wax paper down on the counter so I don't accidentally glue them to the counter. And then all you have to do, I already mixed up the epoxy, Take your epoxy, just put a little bit, it's actually too much. I don't use very much because otherwise it smudges out and I have to clean it up with the acetone. So smear a little along there, like that. And then make sure I got the right side. And I want my hole, I just went and consulted Nancy. She said put the hole towards the thumb. So that's what Nancy says, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it right down here on the counter so I keep it straight. And I'll do that, and after I get a bunch of them, I'm doing a whole bunch of these. After I get a bunch of them done, I'll go back um, when they've dried up a little bit. I'll flip them over and just make sure that the uh, there's no glue smudging out the back. And if there is, I'll clean it up with the acetone. Next thing I need is a little eye to hang it from. So this is some scrap silver wire from making jewelry. And I've got these pliers that have these round ends on them. I don't know what you call these exactly. They're for making jewelry. So I grab it as close to the end as I can to make it as small as possible. And then just, whoops, it's a little too close to the end, I guess. Wrap it around. And then give it a little fold back again. So it looks like like that. And then I'm going to clip it off. I just leave, I don't know, a quarter inch, maybe a little more, something like that. And then I grab onto the eye and I take the little, I don't know what you call it, little part that's sticking out there and I give it a twist or a couple twists. So I figure that'll make it a little less likely to pull out of the epoxy when I glue it into the hole. All right, might have to straighten that up a little bit, but should be pretty good. 
Yeah, I need to straighten the eye up a little bit, but you get the idea. Now I need to just dip this in a little epoxy and insert it into the hole. Try not to make too much of a mess. I like mine to go that way. So the hole is this way, so when the hook goes through, uh, I think it hangs on the branch nicer that way. But you can put it whichever way you like. I always test them first. Make sure they go all the way in. If not, I can trim it off a little bit or grab a different one. So that one looks pretty good. And if you get a little bit around the edges too much, just uh, wipe it off with a little acetone and a Q-tip. And just like that, they're all done. So in addition to the Santa hats and the mittens, uh, I also make Christmas trees, Christmas bells, stockings, and the angels, which uh, I don't have any made yet this year, so i got to get going on angels. They're next on my list. Uh, if you're looking for an idea to make a gift for someone besides a Christmas ornament, uh, I'm going to have a link here to a video on how to make beads that fit on a Pandora bracelet. So if you know somebody with a Pandora bracelet and you have the proper lapidary tools, that might be a fun project for you. So go check that out and I'll see you over there.